Welcome everyone, Keeper Grace and Keeper Eric here today. Uh, we are outside with Rojo, our Sumatran tiger today. Um, and we're going to be doing a theme kind of this week for our Keeper Chat is going to be enrichment. Uh, enrichment is something that we do every day with our animals here. It is a part of our AZA accreditation to offer our animals enrichment. Depending on the species of the animal, depends uh, or determines how often we give it um, enrichment. So somebody like the tiger, we give enrichment to him every single day. We give him something to do. The purpose of enrichment is to kind of facilitate those natural behaviors. So this week we will be going over the different types of enrichment that there is. Um, so with the tiger, he being a predator animal, uses um, a lot of different scents. Um, so that is the, the enrichment that we kind of give him probably the most or we see the reactions out of him the most Because he's going to be using that sense of smell the most to be hunting for prey And so today for example, uh, we're going to be focusing on sensory enrichment um, So sensory enrichment can come in several different forms as you can imagine What are your different senses that you guys that we use as well? We've got visual so something that the animal might see. Um, an example of that might be giving a mirror to a parrot or something like that. Um, we've got olfactory or smell and taste. Um, so that is what I gave him today. Uh, so that for example is gonna be like perfumes, spices, um, scent and, and, and things like that. So I put a little bit of, um, let me see, I did evergreen so we have um, like candy flavoring that we mix up and we stick in little spray bottles. So I sprayed that all over his hanging barrel here. And then I also put some perfume on that, that keg that he was uh, playing with a minute ago. Um, auditory, so sound enrichment. Um, something like that might be um, Henry, everybody's favorite. Henry loves a good bell. Um, so that could be a sound enrichment. Oh. He didn't like that perfume. <laughs> um, another type of sound enrichment might be a CD player. That's what I think we've got some CDs on our, on our Amazon wish list. So we put whether it be music. Henry loves bopping to some good mu music with some good beat on it. <laughs> um. Right at us. Um, we started off with no sound. Oh. And some people are, I can't tell if they're complaining because they still can't hear us. If you can, can you hear, hear us, us now? Uh, if you can, if you can hear us, um, write up. a comment. <laughs> write a comment that says you can hear us. Okay, your mom says she can hear you now. Okay. Good. Do you want me to start over? Um, you might want to start over. You've been doing a little, little bit. bit of a brief. We already had a so, question. Somebody missed the tiger's name. So the tiger's name is Rojo. Uh, we're outside with Rojo, our Sumatran tiger. Um, this week we are focusing on different types of enrichment for our keeper chats. Um, today we're going to talk about sensory enrichment. So just like humans, we're going to talk about the different senses that we have and so the different what that might mean for different types of enrichment for our animals. Um, so again, we have visual enrichment, so something that you might see. That might be something like a mirror for a parrot. Um, olfactory, smell and taste. That's the type of enrichment that I gave Rojo today. Um, that might be perfumes, spices, different scents like that. Sometimes we use different like animal scents, like animal ur synthetic urine scents that hunters might use. Um, so I put wintergreen spray. We use that little like uh, candy flavorings and we mix them up and put them in a spray bottle just like this. I brought them with me so I can show you guys. This is what I put. Here, this is what I put in there today. So we use those candy flavorings and we put them in spray bottles so that we can spray them on um, like logs and stuff like this and put them on a barrel. And then we also use like cooking stuff that you guys might use at home. So I put a little bit of vanilla on the log. And then if anybody found some of those like Bath and Body Works sprays that you know we all have at home that we haven't used in like five years, um, 
I used some of those in there too. So we've got a bunch of those. Grandma perfumes. The gra yeah, we call them grandma perfumes. Um, uh, Marsha, you know our old friend Marsha, uh -huh. she wonders if he likes the smell of cinnamon. He, he does like cinnamon. I think it got used a lot because he really liked it. And so now he's kind of like meh about it right now. So I try to use other scents. Um, and then hopefully in a couple weeks or something, we'll use it again and he'll get excited about it again. That's why I, I, I made up some wintergreen scent this morning because I don't think he's gotten that one in a minute. Um, another type of sensory enrichment might be auditory or sound. So that might be a noisemaker. Henry, our parrot, um, he likes the good like wind chime or bells. Um, that could also mean like playing music or um, rainforest sounds or something like that on a CD. Um, that could be auditory enrichment. And then there's also tactile enrichment. Um, so touch is tactile. So that might be like scratching poles or for example in the goat yard we put um i'll put broom heads on the fence so the goats can rub against that it they they like it it feels good but it it also helps with shedding this time of year as well so those are different types of sensory enrichment um that we use throughout the zoo and evidently it's bath time now <laughs> We'll, we'll be exploring the different types of enrichment throughout the week. Right, so tomorrow we will focus on a different type of enrichment. So make sure you guys check that out. See, see what animal um, we are doing. What did I put on my list for tomorrow? Food-based. That's, yeah. that's an easy one. Everybody likes food-based <laughs> enrichment. But you have to tune in to see what animal we, we do that with. Um, Amanda wants to know what his favorite enrichment is. His favorite enrichment is probably that keg over there. <laughs> He's got one inside in his inside exhibit. I think, I wish I could remember which brewery donated those. It was a local brewery that donated some empty kegs to us. Oh, I thought he was going to come down and play with it. That would be fun. Yeah, he is. See? <laughs> Oh, he's in oh, walked right past it. But yeah, he'll push those around. They're really great because the, oh, he's in the, moving to the shade. Um, they're really great because they're so tough that he can't destroy them. So that's a great example as well. Um, I'm not gonna give the tiger the same type of enrichment that I'm gonna give like the little palace cat or something because we don't want him to be able to. Um, destroy something and then possibly consume it. Uh, let's see. Allison said that some places put treats in ice and then give them to the animals to cool off and chew on. Girl, you're getting ahead of me. That's a different day enrichment. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, that would be a type of um, of food based enrichment. That's what we do a lot on the on the hot days. We'll we'll make fun little ice treats and stick them in the freezer and then plan those for for hot days. Uh, let's see, there was something, I'm trying to see if we have any more good enrichment. Um, your dad asked, how much is of an animal's intelligence related to the enrichment they get? Oh, a lot, yes. So, I mean, you do have to take in, um, the, the, the animal's natural biology. Um, so for example, I'm not going to give the tiger something that he's going to have to unscrew a cap to get food out. He doesn't have opposable thumbs. He's not going to be able to do that. But I can do that with like the Gibbons and the Langers. They have the intelligence and the dexterity. The dexterity. I was trying to say ambidextrous. Like, that's not <laughs> the right word. Um, dexterity to get into those um, enrichment items. Yeah, and some animals are, you know, they, they have the brain power to figure out if they smell something that it's probably inside the box. And some animals just don't have that ability. Right. And so if they can't literally see it, um, they don't know where it is. Right. So you put their food in a and box then, and then it just sits there because they don't know they don't, to go in the right. box. And then I think also, like, we take care of the animals every day. So I know we, we know the individual animals' personalities and w how much effort they're going to put into something. For example, even between the two gibbons, they're very different. Um, Sammy is the type of primate that she's going to sit down and 
figure something out where Frodo, if he can't get it in the first like 15 seconds, he just takes it all the way to the top of the exhibit and chucks it and tries to break the item open. And sometimes animals get lazy if they're really fat or something like right. that. They may not put any effort in. He's just like, excuse you. <laughs> I wasn't implying that he was fat. I'm just saying that As there are animals that wait, Wendy, just wait him. that uh, they've got to be interested in it. That's another great uh, another great form of enrichment that he just walked by. So that was a donated big old donated get a tractor picture tire. Of that. And then in the middle there is donated fire hose from our local fire department. Thank you, Bloomington Fire Department. Um, so I use the fire, they, when they go through inspections of the fire hoses and they can't use them anymore, um, they donate their fire hoses to us and then we weave them into hammocks and stuff and we give them to the animals. <laughs> oh, he hears a dog in the park. So that's a form of auditory enrichment. <laughs> Uh, Julie wants to know, is there a type of enrichment he does not respond to? Um, I think being a predator, he's very food and scent motivated. Um, so a lot of times, honestly, if it's not one of those things, he, he may look at it, push it around a little bit, but he won't, he won't play with it long term or interact with the item long term. And sometimes the, the age of the animal plays yeah. a part. He, he is an older cat. He turned 13 in December. Um, so Sumatran tigers live um, about 15 to 20 in the wild. Um, they can live up to like 25-ish, mid-20s in captivity. So he is an older cat, so he's not going to be nearly as playful as a, as a young tiger. Right. Similar to like your dogs at home, an older dog is going to lie around and sleep a lot more than, than a younger dog that needs lots of toys. Right. Uh, let's get some questions, not necessarily about enrichment, but people are always interested in the sure, tiger. Yeah, I've got all sorts of tiger facts for you. Uh, Amanda wants to know, have the cats seemed more or less active since the zoo has been closed to the guests? Uh, good question. I think it depends on the cat. I don't think the snow leopards have, I don't think anything has affected the snow leopards really. They still are just out there chilling. I think the tigers definitely missed guests. Um, when he hears me in the kitchen making diets or something, He'll, he'll, he'll yodel for me until I start talking to him. <laughs> so I definitely think he misses you guys. Judy wants to know, uh, besides chuffing, what other sounds can a tiger make? Um, he roars. He kind of grumbles. <laughs> whines. Whines. He whines a lot. I don't know if any of you guys, I know I had a cat when I was a kid that would sit at the top of the stairs and just kind of like, yodel. <laughs> I feel like he kind of does that when I'm in the kitchen. Yeah. It's a little kitty noise. Um, Lisa asked about his tongue. Let's see if I can get a close-up of his tongue. his tongue. He's like, oh. <laughs> they can hiss like a house cat. Wait, he can hiss like a house cat. Can you show us your tongue? But he does not purr. If you remember that, I think I mentioned that in an earlier one. If a cat roars they typically don't purr and vice versa uh now that his mouth is closed lisa wanted to know is his tongue rough like a house cat oh uh, yes and i would say it's about five times rougher yeah um now that he's screaming himself yeah it's like sandpaper yeah it's sandpaper oh uh, let's see I think we're at all of the questions we have so far. So you can start throwing out tiger facts. Sure, if you want. I, got, I, I wrote down a couple tiger facts. I was prepared for a kid to ask me how fast they ran today. <laughs> I wrote that down, I found it. Um, so he is a Sumatran tiger. He is the smallest of all of the tiger species. Um, so he's only about 245 pounds. So that's a pretty healthy weight for him. We don't want them to get too much heavier than that because that's when they start having like hip issues and stuff like that. Um, so we like it the weight that he's at right now. Um, in the wild, Sumatran tigers, they typically make um, one large kill a week. And so they won't necessarily have a meal every day. 
here at the zoo we do feed them um, six well we feed them seven days a week but he gets that uh, eight pounds of meat six days a week and then we have what we call a fast day that is healthier for their digestive system um, and so on that seventh day he gets a, a bone femur it's it's a cattle femur it's from a local um, the local butcher but he eats the entire thing the snow leopards they're on the same schedule and they they just eat the bone marrow out of the bone, but he will eat the entire thing. That's how strong his jaw is. He just cracks that bone right open. Um, I did find a fun fact that these guys can run up to 40 miles per hour, um, but only in short bursts. They are known to be ambush hunters, so they'll hide behind things and then ambush prey um, to kill them rather than exert all that effort. <laughs> They're a cat after all. Um, so Sumatran tigers, the wild population is, uh, is about 500 to 600 individuals. So these guys are considered critically endangered. I also found that there are just about 300 uh, Sumatran tigers in zoos globally. Um, so less than a thousand total so less in the than whole a, world. A thousand total in the entire world, yeah. Um, and that's, the, the population is about half. Has, has decreased in about half in the last 25 years. And that's mostly due to um, destruction of their habitat um, and fragmentation of the habitat. So that means that there's like lots of little chunks of habitat. And so the animals have a hard time um, migrating to those different, to, to those different spaces. Um, and a lot of that is due to agricultural farming um, for- um, Palm oil. Palm oil, thank you. Uh, I think it's sugar too, maybe just palm oil. Mostly palm oil. Mostly, mostly palm oil in that because they are found in the island of Sumatra. So these guys are facing a lot of the same um, habitat destruction um, issues as like the Sumatran orangutan. The gibbons one. Yeah, we can hear the gibbons. Um, mm -hmm. And they're also um, a victim of poaching. So there is a lot of the ancient culture over there still in some of those Asian countries. Um, I believe there's one rem there's there's one belief that like they make like tiger bone wine i've heard that um i don't know why you'd want to drink anybody's bones in your wine i don't know that i need that in my wine but um but yeah so they are still illegally poached as well and um, the majority of the wild population is found in five national parks and two game reserves in the island of sumatra um, so that's where they're most of them. They do have a little bit of extra protection there. They have um, game wardens and stuff there to help protect them. But um, people, like I said, people are still illegally poaching these guys. Um, a question that we get a lot um, here that I hear a lot is, um, is he lonely? Um, he is definitely not lonely. Uh, tigers are a solitary animal. Um, and so in the wild, he would be by himself unless he um, unless it was breeding season. He might be found with a male. Otherwise, he's going to be by himself. That's how he likes it best. Um, so for, his, for a little history on Rojo, he did come to us from Topeka Zoo, where he was very successful having babies. And so he moved here to us in Bloomington. Uh, because we are a smaller facility, we only have the space for one tiger at a time. And so um, they, trying to talk. Um, so he came here to us so that his genetics don't become overrepresented in the captive population. Yeah, so he's not gonna be breeding here. It's probably, probably won't be breeding again, but it's always- uh, Yeah, I doubt that he would get another breeding recommendation. It's always point. possible. It's always possible, but he'll probably live out the rest of his life here. And it is our long-term goal to build a new facility where we can breed yeah, tigers. Yeah, it's been a big master plan so that we would have more space for, for more than one tiger. So we're looking for a couple million dollars right. if somebody has some, somebody has some, some laying some around. Lying around. Uh, Prior wants to know how long and how heavy he is. Ooh, I don't know how long he is. How long do you think he is? Oh, let's, let's see. see. How tall are you, approximately? Me? Yeah. I'm five, if you go stand sort of next to him. I don't have any meat. I wish I had meat. Get 
I don't have anything. Yeah. So. When he, when he stands up, he's a little bit taller than me. Yeah. Like this. So he's, he's, a, his arms he's about six feet head to yeah. behind. Yep. And then Wendy weighed him last week and he is almost 250 pounds. So that's a really good weight for him. And like I said, he's the smallest. Of, he's a Subatran tiger. He's the smallest of the tiger species. And there's how many remaining subspecies? Five? I wrote that down too. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. They just split the Indo-Chinese and Malayan tiger. So there are six living tiger species, and then there are three that have gone extinct in the last, what, 100 years? Yeah. 90 years? Yeah. Uh, your sister wants to know, how big are the whiskers? Let me get a zoom. There are a couple different sizes, as you can see. There's a couple of those longer ones that are about the, the what the length of my hand, maybe even a little longer. Yeah, a good four or five inches. Yeah. Uh, you and get the bottom of his feet too, really well from here too. You make it a good paw. See how big his paws are. His his paws are, you know, the size of my palm. Yeah. A big uh, Amur or Siberian tiger. That's the largest subspecies. Yes. Their feet are probably dinner plate sized because yeah. they live in snow and they're bigger tigers. So if you think he's big and dangerous, think about how big a Siberian would be. Uh, Anne wanted to know how old he is again. Uh, he turned 13 in December. So again, he's, he's middle to older age. They live to be about 15 to 20 in the wild. Um, about mid twenties in captivity. Yeah. All right. I think. All right. So yeah. We have well, a drawing to do, oh, don't yeah, we? We have a drawing to do. Let's go. Our mystery animal painting. Did, did anybody have any guesses about what animal this is? I didn't see any. Who who thinks they know what uh, know painted what this? Is? I'll give you a hint. Miss Miss Shannon did uh, one of her lives. With yeah, this animal. it was one of the virtual zoo to use. Yep. So while you guys are thinking about that, I'll draw a name for this draw for this painting. I'll mix everybody's name up. <laughs> who made that painting and who won deborah jamison yeah. deborah Jane. so deborah if you're watching you want to just message the zoo with your address and we can pop that painting in the mail for you yeah uh brie guest turtle laura guest armadillo Neither of which are correct. Good guesses. Yeah. Should we, should we, uh, yeah. Should we Deborah, down? you won a painting by the hissing cockroaches. Not always everybody's favorite, but I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's it's a neat painting I think too. It's, a really it's really neat cool. Painting. So thank you to everyone who donated. Yeah, and so for this week's live, have another necklace so this one is one of those pendants again like we had before that I made but this one has flamingo feathers in it so if you donate to any of our lives this week you'll be entered into a chance to win this flamingo feather necklace and we already had two people donate without even yeah. knowing what it is that's awesome thanks guys so we appreciate it guys and then i think we'll also i'll log on when we're done here and add the um the link to our amazon enrichment our wish, wish list, list yeah again as well since we're talking about enrichment all week uh we do have an enrichment list on facebook um that you guys can Help us purchase some exciting enrichment for the animals. Amazon. Amazon. Yep. And Amazon yep. We'll, we'll push that 
And we All still right. have our chick cam up too. We if do you have, want to yeah, see how so big our... go to YouTube. You can search for the zoo's Facebook or I'm getting all my platforms. Everything's today. Facebook today. Everything's Facebook to me today. Uh, if you go to YouTube and search Miller Park Zoo chicken cam on YouTube, you can find the camera that has our chickens that we hatched. What, two weeks ago now? Yeah, they're you two weeks old. Out. They're huge. They've they're got a bunch big. of teenager feathers and everything. All right. Give one more look Thanks at for joining today, guys. Join us tomorrow. We're going to do food-based enrichment and check out to see what animal uh, joins us for that tomorrow.